So what is the collision domain which is which is what is first of all the collision which is where data transmission passing through the same passing through the same segment in opposite direction to the same segment in opposite direction direction right now what is the collision domain first of all now collision domain so the collision domain uh, basically the this is a group of device connected to a single segment you can also say that group of device connected to a single segment connected to a single segment single segment working in half duplex mode working in half duplex mode half duplex mode and transmit the data at the same time transmit the data at the same time right uh we just took an example of uh the bridge right you can say that we can take a example of bridge take example of bridge device so how the collision domain is going to exist over on that device which is uh i think we have discussed that the tunnel one right so what is the use of this first of all uh, let me describe that suppose that this is your tunnel and inside the tunnel you have the only one railway track right and over here after the tunnel or outside of the tunnel you have the two way to go anyway right so uh the train trains is coming from that way and the train that way as well so at a time see what is this basically at a time um, you can send the multiple data at a time so suppose that these two trains is coming at a time inside the tunnel right so they will collide inside the tunnel just like that okay okay so that is uh, that is the example of you can say that the collision right now so don't write this one right now what are the devices that we have inside this collision domain which is the first device which is we have hub right so what is how it will work and uh, <coughs> what is used it the of a hub device all ports are single collision domain
in a single collision domain. Right? Now, if we talk about the switch, so as a switch, this is per port collision. You can say that per port collision domain. How the per port collision domain, which is we have, suppose that this is the switch device, right? Now, we have the lots of port over there, and we have the PCs mentioned just like that, right? So the, every PC is going to send the data, and that data is collized over on that port, right? But what is the basic function of basic behavior of the switch, which is it is going to send the, these information over on all the ports, whatever the ports is have, it is going to send the data over on all the ports, right? So that collision domain, which is we have the port port, right? Means everyone also going to, going to give the reply for that packet, right? So there will be the collision, collise, right? Means uh, see, it has the one of the function, which is the loop avoidance, right? So with the help of this loop avoidance, uh, the every PC is going to drop the message. Only the sender and the receiver is going to communicate with the help of this switch, right? Otherwise, if they do not have any loop avoidance technique, so this is going to uh, basically this is going to uh, collide each on every steps, right? So that has per port collision domain and switch is the one broadcast domain. Broadcast domain. Right? How the one broadcast domain? Because of whatever the packet this switch is going to get it, it is going to send on the all the ports, right? It is going to send or it is going to transmit that packet over on all the ports, right? Now, the third one which is we have router router is also the power port collision domain right the router is also having the power port collision domain because of that router is also going to uh, just work on that uh, that that concept only right but the only the one thing is more difference between the router and the switch which is the router is going to uh, forward that packet or uh, for making that for for forwarding that packet it is going to make the best part right but the switch is not going to make the best part but it's going to transmit it is used to transmit that file but it is not going to make the best part for them right so just uh, write it down these collision collision domain and all the things then we will move to the broadcast domain and we'll see that what kind of things that we have inside the broadcast domain, right? Okay, let's talk about the broadcast domain now. What is this broadcast domain and uh, basically how it will work, right? So, uh, see, the broadcast domain, first of all, what is this basically? Broadcast domain. So, what is this basically? Uh, let me just describe. Right. When traffic is sent on broadcast, then the traffic is sent on. broadcast and every device connected together listen to the same broadcast and every device 
connected together. Connected together, listen to the same broadcast. listen to the same broadcast. Right? Now, let's talk about the, some devices that we have. So the first device which is we are going to talk about, the hub. Right? So suppose that the hub is having the ports which is, let me just make it, So suppose that we have the some ports also over there and every port is going to send their information or every port is going to exchange their information, right? Now, so what is the uh, main purpose of this hub basically? Every port hub Every port every ports are hub in a single broadcast domain. Single broadcast domain. Right? Means everyone is going to send their information. Right? The hub is not going to uh, uh, hub is not going to store the MAC address, MAC addresses because of it do not have any memory. Right? That is that is that is why we call this hub as a dumb device. Right? Okay. So that every PC suppose that. Uh, the, this one is connected with the one PC, right? Now this PC is going to send any information or any packet which is regarding the video, right? So this one is going to broadcast over on all the ports, right? Either on this port, either on this port, this port and this port, right? So just like that, everyone is going to send their information, just like that, okay? Now, let's talk about this switch. Now the switch is, let me just write that first. Each port of a switch are in a single broadcast domain. of a switch are in a single broadcast domain. How they are, uh, they are, they, they have all the ports in a single broadcast domain. Suppose that that have the ports just like that. Let me just make that. Suppose that everyone is sending the information, but the switch is the only one device that is going uh, going to forward that packet over on all the ports, right? So these are all of the ports is. Uh, is, is going to send their information to the switch and the switch is going to pass out that information over on all the ports, right? So that is why we have the each port of a single switch are in a single broadcast domain, right? Now, let's talk about the router. So suppose that we have the router 
and we have the lot support over there right let me make it so suppose that we have this kind of ports right now of a router per port collision domain and the per port broadcast domain of a router per port collision domain and broadcast domain Why this is having the purport collision domain and the purport broadcast domain? Just uh, this one is is basically what is the basic behavior of the router, which is it is always whatever the packet it is going to get it. This is always going to uh, find it out the best path to the reach the destination, right? So that every port is going to send their information, right? But this router is only uh, just forward that packet, whatever the packet it is coming from. This is going to forward only on the best path only, right? So that have the per port collision domain and the per port broadcast domain, right? Means it is also going to suppose that uh, it can also forward on that that port as well, on even on that port as well, even on that port as well, right? It depends upon the router behavior that uh, how it how it be right. So um, I'm also going to give you the some uh, some kind of scenario, and you will have to find it out that how many collision domain inside that scenario we have, and how many broadcast domain that we have inside the inside the picture, right? So just uh, just make the notes, just write it down this one, then I will give you that scenario. Right. Okay. Uh, right. So I'm going to give you the some some scenario regarding this collision domain and the broadcast domain. You have to find it out in that scenario that how many collision domain we have and how many broadcast domain we have. Right. So let me make the scenario. This is my router number one that is connected with the router number two, right? And let me make it. This is my switch, and it has. Hub and we have the two PCs over there. Right, and over on that switch we have the three PCs. Right. So these are the PCs that we have, and this is inside that scenario. How many collision domain and how many broadcast domain did we have? Guys, just calculate that. Uh, collision domain. Guys, just calculate this that how many collision domain we have and how many broadcast domain we have. First of all, we are going to calculate the collision domain, right? Uh, let me make that. So, how many collision domain we have? 
over on that switch, basically we have what we have. Per port, we have the switch over on the switch. We have per port collision domain, right? Switch, what is a switch? Basically, we have the per port collision domain and one broadcast domain, right? So, how many collisions? We have, what we are going to calculate that? The collision domain, right? So, just calculate the ports, number of ports that we have, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5 collision domain that we have. How how this is? Just let me just. This port, this port, this port, this port, and this hole. Right? Because of this is also the collision domain and the hub is only considered inside the broadcast domain only right because of every port hub are in a single broadcast domain every port every port of a hub in a single broadcast domain right now we have one more uh, one more collision domain that we have which is which is one two three four and this one calculating this this is our one collision domain because of this is the directly connected right so just uh, just keep remember one more thing. Always directly connected link count as a one collision domain or one broadcast domain, right? Directly connected. count as a one right count as a one so over here this is the my directly connected link so the router is also having the one collision domain and the purport collision domain and the purport broadcast domain right and that switch is also having the purport collision domain right so over here this is also the directly connected link that we have which is the one collision domain, uh, purport collision domain, and the purport broadcast domain. So, with the help of this uh, this rule, this is the directly connected. So, we are going to calculate this as a one, right? So, this is the one collision domain. So, how many collision domain number of collision domain that we have? One. This this link is two, three, four, five. This one, right? And this one is six. Right now, let's talk about the broadcast domain. Right, so how you are going to calculate the broadcast domain, which is C from there to there because of let me show you, let me explain that how this is in, in, uh, in this only one broadcast domain. See, the switch is also the one broadcast domain, right. The hub is also the one broadcast domain, right? And the router is also having the per port collision domain and the per port broadcast domain, right? Now, these three are the directly connected. As you can see over there, these three are the directly connected, okay? So whatever the traffic uh, is going to forward over on that PC, that is that is considered as a directly connected that will only consider as a one as we mentioned over there just uh, to following this rule this is having the only one broadcast domain now this one is also the connected with the directly one right this one is also the directly connected one which is we have so this is also we are going to for count as a one so total number of the broadcast domain that we have, which is this one and the, this one, right? So total number of broadcast domain with, that is, which is we have the two, right? Now, uh, let me give you the one simple scenario. That is my hub.
that is my switch and this is also my hub now just count inside that the collision domain and the broadcast domain so how many collision domain we have and how many broadcast domain we have now can you just calculate that the hub is also the one of the collision domain because of every port of a hub in a single collision domain right now if we talk about the switch so that switch is having only one broadcast domain and this is having the four port collision domain right so the per first of all we are going to calculate the collision domain so how many collision domain we have this port over on that port right this is my collision domain so number of the collision domain that we have which is two only right because of the hub hub is only only have the broadcast domain only right so the number of collision domain that we have which is two right now let's talk about the broadcast domain now the switch is also the one of the uh, this is also having the one broadcast domain and the per port collision domain right the hub is also the per port broadcast domain sorry the yes the every port of a hub in a broadcast domain in a single broadcast domain right so these three devices is the directly connected so these three are consider into the one broadcast domain how because of the switch is also having the single broadcast domain and the hub is also having the only single broadcast domain right now to checking this rule we have only the directly connected one right these three uh, devices is the directly connected with each other right so the broadcast domain which is we have one right guys did you understand that or should i explain this one again or we can also take for the one more example if you want but that is not going to be easy right guys understand or should i explain it again sir could you please explain the broadcast to me inside that or uh, the previous scenario you were talking about the integrity okay so see basically to checking this rule or uh, see we have this rule right so the checking of this rule which is uh, that always the directly connected link count as a one either it is a, it's a, it's a, according to the rule according to the devices rule if you are going to calculate the collision domain and the broadcast domain so that is going to for that is totally depend upon the devices rule right so if we talk about the devices rule inside that scenario so the switch is also having the only one broadcast domain right because of the switch is having the four port collision domain and the single broadcast domain right let me just write it down per port collision and single broadcast right so that is the rule of the switch now if we talk about this hub rule so we have all ports in a single broadcast domain right so this is the device rule that we have right now we are going to follow uh, we are going to follow this rule which is always the directly connected link count as a one right 
So over here inside this picture, we have also the one call is one single broadcast single broadcast domain over on that device, and each device having the only one broadcast domain, right? Each device is having the only one broadcast domain, right? Means whatever the packet every device is going to send it, that packet is only going to broadcast, broadcast, and the broadcast only, right? Because of that, have the only one broadcast domain inside that picture. So following this rule, we have the only one broadcast domain over there, right? Understand that, or should I explain this one? Okay, so let me give you what the one more scenario which is regarding the switch only, right? Then uh, the concept will be clear. Right. Just let me make it. <clears throat> Suppose that this is my switch one. Switch two. Switch three and the switch four. Right? So every device is connected with each other. Let me just make it. Now, just count that collision domain, first of all. Collision domain and the number of broadcast domain. Guys, just count inside that. Now, what is the rule of that switch, which is we have? Just, just, uh, just rule, just forward, uh, follow the rule, which is per port collision domain and single broadcast domain. Right, the single broadcast domain. Just forward the rule. Rule. So now, how many ports that we have? Right. Let's count that. This one is the directly connected, so we are count as a one. Right. So we have how many links we have? We have the four links over there. Right. So the number of collision domain which is we have four. Right, the number of collision domain that we have, which is four. How, which is the directly connected link, uh, number of link, which is we have four. So, to following that rule, we have the four collision domain over there. Now, let's talk about this broadcast domain. So, this which is also having the single broadcast domain, and we have the four switches over there, right? So the every PC, every switch is having only single broadcast domain, right? So they are count as a only one sing, one broadcast domain, right? Because of these all devices inside the only one broadcast domain, only single broadcast domain, right? Guys, understand this? Now let's talk about this one. Just take the two routers over there. Now count that collision domain and the broadcast domain. See, we have the only one link over there, right? So the one collision domain and the one broadcast domain because of what is the rule of the router which is per port collision domain and the broadcast domain, right? So this is uh, 
See, the collision domain and the broadcast domain is totally depend upon the rules of the device, right? Whatever the rules that you have, you have to follow that rules only. Then you will never face any problem to count the collision domain and the broadcast domain entire any scenario, right? Entire any scenario. I'm not talking about the particular one scenario, right? So that is that is all about the collision domain and the broadcast domain, right? Now, let's talk about the VLAN. Let's talk about the VLAN. So, what is the VLAN first of all, and uh, basically, what is the range? What is the use of that VLAN that we have, right? Now. The main thing that we are going, I'm going to tell you, uh, we have the lots of things over there, so I will also explain that, right? So don't worry. VLAN is, is called Virtual Local Area Network, right? The VLAN is called Virtual Local Area Network. Right? What is the use of this? So, it is used to break the broadcast domain. Right, it is used to break broadcast domain, or you can say that it is used to make multiple broadcast domain broadcast. on the switch, right? Because of the switch is the only one device that we have, the only one broadcast domain over on the switch, right? Now, why we need, first of all, why we need the VLAN, right? Let me just uh, tell you. Suppose that you are working in your organization and the lots of PC that you have over on that switch. Let me just make that. Right? So these, suppose that uh, we have the multiple departments inside our organization, right? Because of uh, the, our organization is very huge, right? Suppose that we have the HR department, we have account department, right? We have a management department, or you can say that sales department, right? Now, suppose that these, these three ports inside these HR department only, right? Suppose that these three boards, uh, these three PCs, suppose that we have the, some PCs also over there, right? Let me just make it. So these three PC is basically uh, in having the, uh, the, the access of the HR department only, right? So they are going to share the file which is regarding the HR file only, right? Whatever the file it is going to share it, they are sharing with each other. But if that PC is going to share any file, right? Suppose that this is going to share any uh, any curriculum vitae of of the any any participants, right? So that curriculum vitae is uh, going to send over on all the ports, right? Because of the switch is work only on the single broadcast domain, right? So that packet is going to forward over on all the ports. Either suppose that 
we have three PCs on inside the account department, right? And this rest of the PC which is we have inside the sales department, right? So this sales department is also getting this CB and this account department is also getting that CB, right? But this CV is not usable for the sales department and it's also not usable for the account department as well, right? Now, that is why we need the VLAN to make the broadcast to uh, to break the broadcast domain or uh, to make the multiple broadcast domain into the one broadcast domain, right? Uh, to make the multiple logical broadcast domain, right? You can say that. logical broadcast domain because of this is the physical device right the switch is your physical device right so you are not going to break the switch right just like that you are not going to break the switch because of this is the device right so we have the only one thing that we can go for the logical or the virtual right so the vlan is the only one function that that is going to provide the uh, the multiple broadcast domain right now The VLAN is uh, is also the custom network which is uh, created from one or more local area network, right? Suppose that this is my into the one local area network. So we, with the help of this VLAN, we can uh, we can we can divide it into the multiple local area network, right? And it enables a group of device available in the multiple network to be combined into the one logical network, right? to be combined into the one logical network. The result became of a virtual local area network, which is the VAL, that is administrated like a physical lab, right? It will work like a logical, but it look like the physical lab, right? Because of this is going to break the broadcast domain over on that device, right? Now, let's talk about this, uh, the range of the VLAN, right? Like, what is the range that we have? And how we can assign that, we will also talk about that, right? Uh, regarding the commands and all the things, right? So the range which is we are going to talk about, the total range which is we have 0 to 4095, right? The range of the VLAN which is we have 0 to 4095, right? So let's talk about the VLAN one. This is VLAN. VLAN 1, right? So, what is the use of this VLAN 1? This is, you can call it, this is default VLAN of a switch. Of a switch, right? You can't change it right you cannot change it or delete it or uh, use it right now let's talk about the valid range of that which is VLAN 2 to 1001 right it's a normal VLAN range It's a normal VLAN range. You can edit, create, and delete anything, right? 
Now, let's talk about the another VLAN which is, you can also call it standard range of the VLAN. Standard range. Now, we have the extended range as well, which is the VLAN 2006 24094. It is the extended range of the VLAN. Extended range of VLAN. Right? We will also talk about this that uh, the configuration of the VLAN. Right? Now let's talk about the between 1001 to 2006. Right? Where are the others VLAN and where we can use it, right? So, 1002 to 1005 VLAN, which is we can use it. This is used for token ring and FDDI, right? So uh, you can say that this is uh, this is you can say that this is the default Cisco range. You cannot change it. You cannot delete it, right? So that is the range of the some VLANs which is we have over there, right? And um, then we will talk about how to configure this VLAN over on the switch, right? So just write it on this one, then we will back and then we will do some configuration regarding the VLAN and all. Okay, so first of all, uh, basically we are going to see that how switch learns MAC right and how many devices that we have and what is the main function inside the mac address learning format right let me open that Topic is which is we are going to discuss how switch learns MAC address, right? So basically, uh, see, suppose that we have a device which is called switch right now what is the use of this switch basically in the most of the organization we have uh, we mostly we use this switch right now we have lots of ports also over there over on the switch right and uh, the each port is having the PCs connectivity are the different device connectivity as well, right? So just like that, in this in this scenario, we have one switch over there, and we have lots of PCs over there, right? Now, suppose that this PC having um, basically this PC having the MAC address of that. Suppose that uh, let me just this PC is have the MAC address of. dot zero zero a b dot one three zero a right now this pc is having the mac address of a b a c dot zero a b one dot one three zero d right 
so this is the mac address of that pc right now how how this switch can understand that which mac address is which pc now let me just erase me erase it and let me just make it now we have the we have two types of things over there which is ethernet header and mac address table right we have ethernet header and we have the mac address table right now the main purpose of these things that we have is let me just explain that right so we have basically uh, three primary function to learn the mac addresses over on the switch let me just erase this one and let me make it that clear this is my switch now we have the three primary function we have what are these three primary functions that we have first one which is forward frame forward frame now the second one which is we have learn mac address the third one which is we have a wide loop wide loops right now these three function is the major function of the one switch which is we are going to talk about right now what is the mean by this forward frame which is we are going to see that which is you can also say that the first function which is for which is uh, this which is going to first of all check it which is ethernet frame right we have also the some kind of uh, function inside that ethernet frame as well now the second one which is we have mac address table mac address table right the third one which is we have examining examining frames right so these three functions that we have now let's talk about this ethernet frame what is this basically first of all so the ethernet frame is the ethernet frame having the content of these things let me just make that we have header over there right now the second one which is we have data and the last one which is we have trailer let me right so the first one which is we have header the second one which is we have data and the last one which is we have trailer so what is the header that we have inside that right this is called ethernet frame so inside this header we have 
the true content of that which is which is source MAC address source MAC and the destination MAC right now this is all about the Ethernet head right and <coughs> means if if any any PC or any device is connected or on that switch so that Ethernet header having the information about that that which device is connected on which port so suppose that we have the two devices over there the two PCs over there which is like that and that have that MAC address suppose that that having the MAC address of 0A and that have the MAC address of 0B right and that is connected over on the fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 interface and that is connected on the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface right so that is the types of interface that uh, we will also talk about it right now the next things that we have the data right so suppose that this PC is uh, is going to send send the, some image file over there right which type of file that it is going to send it image file right now how this image file uh, will send with the help of that switch and uh, that 0 BPC is required to this image file right so that is called the data right that is called the data which is we are going to send it okay now the trailer is going to um, going to uh, like explain you about the some external things regarding this data right so suppose that after uh, see after uh, adding these kind of things it is going to make the mac address table over there right let me just it is that let me make the MAC address table right MAC address table so inside this MAC address table what uh, what we have we have every information about the MAC address and the port as well right means over on the fast ethernet 0 slash 0 that which is we have and over on that port which MAC address is learned which is the 0a right so that MAC address is learned on that MAC uh, that interface which is mentioned over on that port right so that switch basically who is going to make that MAC address table this switch is going to MAC make the MAC address table and that MAC address is where this MAC address is going to store which is inside the CAM table inside the CAM memory right you can say the CAM memory or the flash memory right so over there, these are uh, the every information regarding the MAC address is going to store, right? Now, this is my one of the one uh, another interface which is we have fast Ethernet zero slash one, and over on that uh, that interface that we have the MAC address is learned which is zero B, right? So that MAC address is learned on that interface, right? Now, this is the MAC address table that uh, after adding any any link or uh, any things over on that device, over on the switch, that switch is going to first of all make or maintain this MAC address table. So with this, with the help of this MAC address table, it is going to forward or it is going to send the any image file or any file which is uh, which is the sender and the receiver which is sending by the sender and receiving by the receiver side right so now the the main thing is that over there 
Now, this PC is going to send the data of the image file, right? Now, this switch will get the data over on that interface, which is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, right? So, this switch will look that where it is coming from. It is coming from 0008, which is that PC and where it connected, which is connected on my interface, which is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, right? Now, after that, it is going to require that uh, where this packet is going to send it. This packet is going to send it either on that PC or the another PC, right? So basically, the, uh, suppose that this PC having the zero C of the MAC address. So that every information will be mentioned over there, right? Suppose that this MAC address is learned on that interface, right? Now, everything will be mentioned or everything is going to store inside this can MAC address table, right? 000C, right? So these kind of things is, uh, this switch is going to maintain all about this MAC address, right? Now, this switch will look that, uh, okay, I have got this message, I have got this packet, but I have the two paths to send over there, right? So the switch, uh, so, what is the by default behavior of the switch, which is it is going to send that information over on all the ports, right? Whatever the port is have, it is going to send it over on that only, right? So after getting this packet of the message of the image file, this PC is also get it and this PC is also get it, right? Now, who is going to uh, request for that image file, which is, suppose that this PC is requested for this image file, which is, uh, which is it required and uh, that PC have that image file, right? So that PC is going to send that image file because of it got the request from the another PC, which is that one, right? So this one is also, uh, is also getting that, but this one is, uh, basically, it is it is received, but it is going to also send the reply because of see the switch. What the switch will do? Basically, it is uh, it is it is it is basically get all over uh, uh, whatever the packet it is getting it. It is going to send that packet over on all the interfaces, right? So the every PC will get that, and every PC will give the reply for that. But the Sender PC will take the action of that, that whatever the uh, C, suppose that this one is also going to give the reply and this one is also going to give the reply, right? Now, this PC will receive the reply, this PC will also receive the reply, and that PC is also receive the reply, and that PC is also receive the reply, which is coming from each and every PC, right? Now. The, all, the, the last step of that, which is the loop avoid. How this is going to avoid the loop, which is, it is going to uh, make, it is going to look the MAC address table that which is it required, right? Now, this PC is also know that, that where I have to send that image or where I just sent that image, which is over on that address, right? So this PC will receive the reply, which is only coming from that PC only, right? So this PC is only get the reply of the requester PC, which is this one, right? This one is also going to send the reply, but this PC is going to block that, right? Because of this is the not the, uh, this PC is not the requester, right? This PC is the requester, right? So these kind of things that uh, the switch can learn MAC address and the switch will work entire our domain, right? So this is how that switch will work and uh, the switch will learn MAC addresses. Okay, guys, do you have any doubt regarding that?